Okay, so you're, this is a Mashable article. Uh, uh yeah. <laughs> I've seen a lot of this where a lot of people are saying, uh, even on Twitter, people I like follow are saying that they're content with staying with iPhone 4, that the 4S is not. The same, to be honest with you, the same shit was said during 3G and 3GS. And I upgraded from 3G to 3GS and, and appreciated the speed. As the speed was there from 3G to 3GS, and the, the hardware improvements that I noticed, uh, it was worth the upgrade for me. Well, now it's like, it's like here, honestly, you know, setting aside my personal bias for Apple, if you want iOS and you want the iPhone platform, if you already have an iPhone 4, in my personal opinion, you're fine with it unless you want one of the following. Uh, you want to switch to Sprint so you can get a better data plan. That's a reason to buy a 4S. Um, you are having endless dropped calls. You're in one of the areas that's having endless dropped calls. The dual antenna might fix your call quality, probably would, so that's a reason to buy the 4S. Um, uh, it, like you're saying, it's slightly faster, but if you're, if you're happy with the speed of your 4, you, you don't need to buy the 4S just for that. You know, there, there are a few perfectly valid reasons to buy a 4S if you like the iPhone and you want to use the iOS platform, but that's them. It's not, ooh, it's like, because you can get iOS 5 on your iPhone 4. And, and 3G, and, and the hardware is not significantly different between the 4 and the 4S that, you know, if you've upgraded to iOS 5 and you're happy with the speed of it, aside from the call quality or switching to better uh, data, you don't need to buy a 4S. You're probably better off, if you want to stick with that platform, to wait a cycle and wait for an iPhone 5, uh, uh, which will probably if I had to guess, be Apple's 4G offering. Because I, I, I don't think they can wait forever to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's my opinion. I don't know what's yours. You, can you think of any other reasons to make that upgrade? Oh, man, dude, a consumer's a consumer. Whatever's bad for them is actually... <laughs> oh, no, I, I agree. If, if you want a 4S, <laughs> uh, okay. But I mean, I mean, like reasons from a consumer standpoint, where it, it's a benefit to you to upgrade. I'm the normal consumer because obviously, I you know, people buy a phone and keep the iPhone, even if it can't make a phone call, just to play games on it. So I'm obviously not of that mindset at all. I mean, that's a total. That's like opposite side of the damned ocean of what I'm thinking. That that so, actually, what you just brought up would be another reason to buy a 4s. You have a kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you have a kid, you know, you want to downgrade yours through your family, you know, and, and your kid wants it for video games, so you don't care if they can make phone calls, which would be another valid reason. Yeah, I, I, obviously, I'm not, uh, I somehow, I still argue my point because somehow I think that the consumer will write itself because luxury and fluff only lasts so long before you really have to get, you know, you have to get back to the meat of things. I, I honestly, what I'm seeing happen, and we're getting into PCB Mac, is honestly, I'm seeing Windows 8 flop, but I'm seeing once all the support applications are there in place for the Windows platform and everybody makes the change they're going to have to make to have a pleasant experience with Windows 8, and we have another few cycles of Moore's Law, things will get cheap enough that maybe touch screens will become affordable. So I think. Over the next three to five years, Android's going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to develop like it's doing. Uh, come Windows 9, Microsoft might be able to make an offering. At the same time, I'm hoping RIM uh, doesn't destroy their base user, uh, doesn't offend their base user base and manages to balance that Jekyll and hyde -ness. But like you're saying, with all of that going on, my guess is in two to three years, the the cool factor of the iPhone will wear off for the I want something that I can actually get something done on as as we have another generation of people go from being 14 to 21 year olds to actually being out in the world and doing stuff and yada yada and the product the productivity applications are on Android Windows and RIM so it'll be you know iPhone for kids for for uh, for fun and productivity, you know, this is the big boy phone, you know, I want to get stuff done now, and they'll, they'll choose the platform that's best for their situation, um, which would mean it'd actually be the first time in the industry where the main computing or uh, baseline devices was actually split well between more than two platforms. 
because desktop side, it's you know, it's Windows versus Apple, and then right. Linux and BSD are this like third party. It's not that they're not capable of doing all the same stuff. It's just in the consumer side, they don't have the same uh, presence offering. But that's not the case with these phone slate devices. You know, there's. Well, you know, I want to add something that you know. Battery life, supposedly in the 4S, I mean, according to tests, is not as long as, as iPhone 4. And also, there, see, here, here it is. And this is what I really want to antagonize into the Apple uh, purists who are. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Special. Every time Apple has got on stage, that's always been a statistic they've toted. It has longer battery life. Are you saying it's well, finally uh, shorter? The 4S, it's not because, because what's happening, and which I've always argued, is that now features are getting put in, put in. If you and I discussed this. It's about function and what I want to get done. Well, that's going to take battery life. And obviously the A5 and, and the other processors of which people demand more power, it's going to juice your battery more. And here we go. All that bullshit arguing about, oh, battery, battery, battery. I guarantee you the iPhone, um, the Apple will acquiesce to features well, okay, but see, but, okay, it, I, I didn't know that, but that creates two issues for Apple, because, like you're saying, going forward, for the reasons I was saying, and like you pointed and out, they have, they, they yeah, now. they have to acquiesce to those features that the consumer is demanding, or they become obsolete. But like you're saying, that means eventually they're going to get down to a device that doesn't have the best battery life, and they're either going to get to maintain. Yeah. No, 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 no. But Apple's official yeah. philosophy on all their mobile devices has been the battery's built in. We don't need a swappable battery because it's a better design. They're going to be put between violating the core Apple philosophy and fixing what is a design flaw in the device of allowing you to switch the battery. Which one do you think is going to win there? Yeah. See, I always try to stay away from the hypocritical arguments because usually Apple purists will defend each generation. And each generation, when there's an acquiescence, uh, or where, where Apple acquiesces to, to uh, giving in to more features and things that does compromise, the Apple fans will always, uh, purists will continue to follow that, but then read, but then become hypocritical of uh, earlier arguments. And the thing that is, I've always argued, features rules all, always. I don't care where you are right now, you can never argue to me that you will limit yourself for the sake of a freaking battery to, to do things that, that, that matter. Because if, you're, if that's the case, then you have a useless device, utterly. And, and that, and but if it's cool, device, who cares? Yeah, exactly. As other competitive devices can do more and more and more, and other businesses adopt them because they want those features, and they don't mind swapping out a battery, you're left in, in, in the freaking outfield. You know? And then if you're going to say, well, I'm just happy with doing this and this and this on own, then I think you're kidding yourself. I think you're living in freaking denial, and you can just be happy with your little limited world. But these devices are eventually going to have to become, like we were discussing in Macros' PC, they are eventually going to catch up on a battery to about the power of what we're doing on a desktop. And, and, and I want to... Well, well we, we, we should qualify that. What the average user is doing on yeah, the desktop. Yeah, you, you, will, you will never yeah. be able to please the I truly need a desktop I, I, user on... <laughs> Yeah, but a lot of the way of hate on a desktop is what I'm getting at. Y yes. Yeah, you're not this, but but what, what what I'm saying is that is that um, maybe maybe me forget my thought uh, when I was trying to go. Uh, damn it. Sorry. I was on I was on something. Um, shoot. You're talking about him getting as powerful as desktops and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, getting as powerful as desktop. Oh yeah. And the target that I wanted to, to, to bring to that is that, isn't it ironic, and this is something I've been arguing since day one, Intel has brought us to this wasteful position of hardware and software along with Microsoft. The freaking Wintel Alliance has brought us the most inefficient combination known to man. And yet, risk, under which was always a greater power over complex instructions and computing. Isn't it ironic that we are rising on the risk wave and bringing the power of mobile, running on a battery, almost to the power of the desktop. Well, and uh, I think Intel's a little afraid of that because they're making this massive push to try and get. Right. Uh, they, they've got they've got Android to say, okay, Android will support Intel and, and yada yada because they are desperately trying to get. No, 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 mobile, come back to x86. It's better. <laughs> it's like, it's like, uh, I, my Intel even keeps. 
continue, then why don't they just make new, you know, new binaries and thing? I mean, get off of it, Intel. It's, it, Jesus. I mean, it's so in, insane. It's utterly insane. Yeah. I, 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 we're not there yet, but I can't wait till we yeah, have. We're close. We're, we're, we're close. There. I, 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 like thirteen or fifteen nanometers. Holy crap! Oh no, I know. And, and they're basically as soon as we get those up to the point that they're these little um, tri opt core systems, which they have in the pipeline, but they aren't on the, available to the consumer yet. As soon yeah. as they get those out. Then the next revision of those, I could see really, uh, if they wanted to, them making one of those that's in the same league as Xeons and i7s. In which case, it you know, then it gets really interesting because they're yeah, like, those, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ARM's going to be on probably more laptops than Intel in the yeah. coming years. And what's, and what's interesting is that Intel, you know, oh, we have a 3D transistor. All ARM did was laugh at Intel. It's like, yeah, our architecture doesn't need that yet. We'll wait till we get to a lower nanometer before we even have to worry about that. Well, and like and you're saying, for the power reasons and the heat dissipation reasons, that's going to make some really nice mobile computing devices in the next three to five years. So, I mean, it's just, I, mean uh, I, I'm just happy to say it that way. You know, finally, we're risking had to fall the wayside because the where desktops and, and windows have brought and now windows is getting on the arm i, I mean finally a risk the, uh, uh, honestly and, that was the just, biggest hold yeah. up that microsoft did not support it that has now changed so now the four major platforms os 10 uh linux bsd and microsoft all support it now which means it, there is no reason for yeah, because, I mean, Linux has supported it for years. Uh, OS X has always had the option because it's Unix-based. It just didn't because they weren't using that. But there's nothing to stop Apple from doing that. Uh, and BSD had the same advantages for being, you know, Unix too. So, it, I mean, it literally, the holdup was, as usual, Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it is truly amazing to see. And, and there's That's why I say, like, the tablets in the current form are not something I'm interested in. Because they don't obviously have the computing power that I want on that device for that amount of money. Other than if it were to assist me with my phone. In, in other words, yeah, and I, I've already said that. I'm not going to rehash that. Everybody knows you watch other videos. But that, but that is the biggest thing. But it's coming. It's coming as as, as ARM gets better. And now I'm happy to see that Apple is adding features, and they're and they're and they're willing to do it at the cost of battery power because that's important. This is a good thing. I'm just, I'm just saying this because I'm, I'm calling out hypocrites where they are, and that function is the priority over battery. We need to do something. Now, I'm not saying on extremes, and please don't give me these stupid ass extreme arguments of, well, if your battery lasts 10 minutes, what good is it? Please, you know, I, I Web OS, my Palm 3 Plus is probably the worst battery life. Of all smartphones I've had from Android. Uh, I, no, no, there is one that does top it, and that is that true multitasking OS that Rem made. If you were really truly doing a lot of multitasking on that, the battery lasted. Do an X that's worse battery life? No, 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 no. If you're using, if you're truly using the multitasking, because it's true, it, it truly allowed you to run all of those apps in parallel. Multitasking, yeah, which of course would would which of course would use juice and drain the battery very quickly. I mean, you could kill the thing in less than an hour if you yeah. really tried. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I can't kill my phone in an hour, but well, I mean, I, I the, there know. were people who like really got a lot of stuff going who were able to kill it in like twenty eight minutes. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's a power user who's going like, yeah. and they had the option if they wanted to. So that's not this pretty shitty battery. I mean, it doesn't last long. It's not, and I admit, it's nowhere near the length of, of what my iPhones did, but the kind of stuff I'm doing on it, I, I didn't quite do on the iPhone either. So, you, you know, I can swap the battery. It's not a big deal. I have, you know, I just put a new battery in, bam, I'm, I'm, I'm up and, and running again. Well, and then, uh, see, that, that's the thing I've never understood, that that's the fanboy argument. Well, if you put a swappable battery on it, you know, you can't have a unibody case or anything. You destroy it. I'm like, shit. I, I'm like, bullshit. Do you know how many phones I've seen that have a unibody feel case with swappable? It's just, it's a, why is the unibody important? It's, what? 
that that's one of those intangible things that's important to fanboys. But I personally think what does it, it do for you? It, 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 it people's virgin eyes. I, that's all I can say. You know. Uh, but personally, you can do a unibody design. You know, you can make the whole plate instead of just a piece of it. You can do that. That's doable. I've never understood why Apple didn't. And, and I think since they, I didn't know that they'd made that sacrifice with the forest. If they finally gotten on that bandwagon. That means they probably will, in two or three revisions, accept. And there'll be this big announcement. Somebody from Apple will get on stage. And now, it has a removable battery. And everybody will stand up and clap and go, yay, yay. <laughs> It'll be like, well, it took you long enough. That's like Chrome adding print preview. You know, it's like, it's like oh, finally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just... Apple is, is obviously now adding more and more features, and the batteries. See, battery technology is, uh, is, doesn't doesn't progress as fast, and, and that's the thing, you know. And, and, and the well, battery, you, no, like, no, you stuff. say that. Take a look at the capacitant cell. Wait a minute. Okay, let me put a copy up. At the price point for what you want to sell on these devices, they're not going to go out and, and buy. Yes, the technology of batteries. It may exist, but at X price, no, they've got to sell you. No, no, that, that's price. the thing. Um, we now have, the, the, they're only good for like small power needs, like you'd need on a mobile phone or something, but they have managed to get capa uh, true ca capacitors that are micro uh, micro cells, and they, I mean, they're arranged like a battery, but they're a true capacitor, and they're, they're not cheap enough. They're like comparable in cost at that low power need to a battery. So that's that's a very advantageous thing, and that technology yeah. is as these devices become more powerful computing devices, these little cell and fuel cell hybrid mm -hmm. systems are going to become. I think we're going to switch off of traditional batteries to those because right. they they make it, more it, sense. You know, my see my Palm Free. I don't really push it during the day. Well, when ask me a work day, meaning eight hours. But then, but then I put, you know, I start charging it in my car. If I'm, really, if I'm really pushing that phone, it'll, the max that I've had to is like, well, I'm, okay, I'm on my way home and I charge it. Now, when I'm riding my, see, when I'm riding my, uh, uh, when, I, when I have my uh, motorcycle, um, which I usually do, if, if, you know, every day, I just swap, I just swap the battery out. Uh, but if I'm out in a car, for instance, my, uh, you know, I got to pick up my kids or whatever, I'm charging it in the car, but about, that's where I think I've run the max out on a Palm Tree is about a work day, like I get out of work and the damn things are, you know, and from what I'm ever doing on it during the day is, 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 uh, is down significantly, so. Well, and it's like that's the, like you said, you just carry a second charge battery or something, which is an advantage. So yeah, well, I, I, th that that's hope for Apple then if they're finally yeah, going to cross. Yeah, features, man. They're going to continue to do that. I just want to point out this is that they, for, for, for iOS to continue to compete with Android, they're going to have to make changes to it. Like they're going to have to change the way they do it. They're going to have to change the way they do it. They're going to have to change the way they do it. They're going to have to I'm sorry, you can argue this mythical, which is really a lot of caca, about, oh, Apple is doing it in some sort of whimsical, wonderful way. No, no. Uh, in the end, there's... No, I, I'm sorry. I mean, there's not, you know, it's not that significant. And that, but if they want to keep up with features, they're going to uh, have to just... Add them on. Add them on. Wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. We have to make a bet now. How, how many more iPhones do you figure before Apple's forced to add a removable battery? That's a, well, see, now, now Android has facial recognition. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, which is, uh, interestingly enough, a feature I don't really like. But yeah. I know. That's got to be battery intensive. Well, no, we'll, we'll, we'll go over that in PC, but it's like on, on the iPhone. Because it's like, like you're saying, they're going to have to keep it, and they're going to reach a limit at some point where they're going to cross, you know, enough battery life to get their average user through the day versus, uh, you know, when... Well, you know what? We may not even have to say it's interchangeable. Maybe they come up with something that does something to the battery. You know, that's Apple for you. They come up with some weird alternative. Like they did with the Magic Mouse? You know, it's like... <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll do an alternative thing. 
<laughs> yeah, they'll come up. They'll 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 send their thousand engineers to go work for forty days and forty nights to give them a miracle to solve a problem they create. <laughs> So you're thinking two versions, you know, not not the next one, but the one after. Well, actually, that would be three versions, because if they the keep software the software would have to change twice, not the hardware. Okay, so two software updates. Two software versions, yeah, because that's where the features come from, not really the hardware. Right. Yeah. Um. I, so got, and yeah. I'm thinking that iOS seven is is going to be like on iPhone. Six, I don't know. That's I, your guess, but so you, you're 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 you're, you're you're guessing iOS seven is when they'll have to do that, either in preparation for or after when iOS seven destroys all the old phones. <laughs> hopefully, the, hopefully, if you're an Apple fan, they do it one way. If you hate Apple, you hope they do it the other way. You know, it's the. <laughs> happened so many times where the hypocrisy is called and you can go back to read these pundit articles that defendant Apple's maneuver there to only have to eat their, off their damn words when Apple changes. Well, you know, and there's, there's a perfect example of that, and that is that iOS is focusing on games and that you have Steam for OS X. You know, because for the longest time the Apple argument was games! Games! I do look! <laughs> Which is... The rest